All right, I believe we are live. We are, it's amazing. Uh, great, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Colin from Mandy. Uh, I'm back for those of you who were with us last month, but I have a very special, exciting new guest today. The amazing Debbie O'Brien is here. Uh, Debbie is a renowned casting director in the UK and has worked on some amazing projects and has tons of um, sort of important, exciting info to share with kids and parents and uh, actors today. Uh, so Debbie, thank you so much for sharing your evening with us a little bit. Oh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I, I can't see who's with us, but um, I'm delighted you're all here. Yeah, I know. We're kind of like behind the Wizard of Oz <laughs> curtain here. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> we'll make it work. Uh, so Debbie, before we get started, I wonder if you could just tell uh, some folks a little bit about you and sort of your background, how you got into casting, sort of, you know, I think it's always helpful for actors to hear the journey you know often we think of one journey and everybody in our industry has so many different paths and, and sort of uh, journeys that they're on so it'd be cool to hear about that sure well i did a degree in drama and then when i left there i became a stage manager uh in the west end in london um which was very exciting i must say and um <laughs> i did on my first show which was a show called dracula uh with terence stamp in it uh the casting director on that uh was doing some auditions and let me help out at the auditions. so right from the beginning my journey in in theater started with auditions which was fantastic and um i then after that show closed that was at the shaftesbury theater i went on to work uh on the original production of annie at the victoria palace uh, and i was an asm on there but uh, after I'd been on it for about a year or something, I also became children's administrator on it. So I would help with auditions and I would license the children, things like that, as well as doing my ASM job. Um, so I did all of that. And then I went on to do other shows in the West End in stage management. And um, I then went to work as a production assistant in a producer's office and helped with auditions there. And the casting director who did lots of those shows was Celestia Fox. And I learned everything I really knew about casting from Celestia Fox. Um, I mean, she's just incredible. And uh, I did, from there, I went on to do all sorts of things. I think I've done every job in theater apart from sound. <laughs> I mean, I literally have been a wardrobe mistress. I've done follow spot operating. I've done front of house. I've done box office. I was general manager for some venues. I've worked on building projects in theatres, but all the way along, I kept doing bits and pieces of casting and gradually I did less of the other things and more of the casting. But I've always had done quite a lot of children's casting um, alongside all the adult casting we do as well. So that was, it was great, you know, because every show you do is different. So you learn every single show you do and that's, that's what makes the job exciting actually. Totally, and is there something particular that makes you gravitate, gravitate towards working with kids so frequently and sort of, you know, is that- No, people just kept looking as jobs really. Yeah. <laughs> just the <laughs> work, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, it is, it's quite complicated working with children in the UK because of the licensing process. So if you're casting them and you're responsible for doing the administration, you get to know both sides of what's required, which is really useful. Um, and you get to know the agents that are worth working with and uh, you get to know how to find children who don't have agents. So you just build that up as you go along. Um, and for the, for the producers who then employ you, it's great because you have a bit of a shortcut to making all this work. And um, it's, it's children's auditions are more interesting than any other auditions because these are people who are so fresh and so new that they don't have the same sort of hang-ups as, as adult, adult actors might. They're, right. very, they're very great auditions to work on and, and they're very tiring, but we always <laughs> come out at the end of the day having had an amazing time. We really do. Yeah, absolutely. Having worked with kids, produced movies with kids and stuff, there's just this sense of play and excitement that is, carries you through those tired moments into the other side of it. So. Absolutely. Um, I heard you say a couple buzzwords already that I'm sure um, viewers are wondering about. So you mentioned agents, you mentioned licensing, and you sort of mentioned those kids that don't have agents. Um, so I wonder if we can just start by talking about sort of any tips or suggestions that you have for, for kids, performers who have that raw talent or who've been training maybe in a small scale, how do you sort of break into the industry? If, if you were going to notice them, how would you go about noticing them? What would they need to do in order to get on your radar? 
Um, if they don't have an agent already, um, the, the, the hardest thing for them is to find out when we're doing auditions. So we normally put uh, the information out as widely as we possibly can. So we'll put it on our website, we'll put it out on social media, we'll put it on the breakdown services. So we use mandy.com, we use um, a couple of the other um, people, you know, subscription services like Casting Weekly and CastWeb, where mm -hmm. you can subscribe to them. We put it on Spotlight always. Um, of course, you only get to see that information if you're already registered on Spotlight, which children who are just starting out may not be. Um, it's, it, we always think that the further we can put the information out, the better. So we will try and put it out to schools and to local dance schools and local drama classes, um, just so that as many people see that information as possible. Now, if you see the information somewhere on social media, which is probably where you might pick it up from, the really important thing is to read the information carefully and then there'll always be some way of you getting hold of us. We'll probably give you an email address to email, but you need, really need to read it carefully because what, we, what tends to happen if you don't have an agent is you might think your daughter or your son um, really wants to perform, but if they don't meet the criteria for that role, then there's no point in suggesting them for that show. And right. it's, so it's really important that you read the detail and then you just email us and we would go through, we literally read every single application that comes into us. I mean, I think people think, you know if they don't get a reply from us we haven't read that but we absolutely do and uh you we might have given you a postal address to send it to more likely it's going to be an email you don't have to be on spotlight to do that um you know we want a, a, a good head and shoulders shot which doesn't have to be a professional shot if you don't if you've never done this before it can be a snapshot but it needs to be a clear one that looks like the child and has been taken very recently so we know that they're not older or younger than that and uh, tell us what what else they've done and it, to be honest most shows the children in them don't necessarily have had to already be professional actors you know we're quite often looking for raw talent and um, they may only have done drama classes or they may have done drama classes at school or they've done dra dance classes or they've done their lambda exams something like that and that's all valuable information. So just put it in a short email to us uh, and then we'll decide whether, you know, you meet the criteria for an audition. I love that. So it seems like there's a, a very a sort of open channel there for you guys yeah. and, and then an even playing field. It's really about the right actor for the right role. Absolutely. And, and it honestly doesn't matter to us whether a child has an agent or not before we decide to see them. If they're right for the role, we'll see them. And, um, you know, we've, we've cast shows in the West End, um, and you know for touring and all sorts of shows television shows with children in them and quite often the children that get those roles haven't come through the stage schools as it were they might have mm -hmm. come from a local dance school or something like that famously claire who works in our office managed to rescue a, a cv and photo that was posted to us that the dog got and nearly chewed up and that girl ended up playing annie in the west end so oh my gosh you know, that's fine <laughs> We're, we're always we're very grateful that Clara rescued that CV. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so in, in terms of training, you know, you sort of touched on it briefly, but are there certain uh, avenues or, or, or institutions or, or methods of training that you think, okay, if you're a brand new starting out, you should focus on this. Or if you're somewhere in your, I say mid career, meaning ch mid child career, but <laughs> you know, you should focus on this. Are there certain avenues that you suggest for actors at different stages? Um, it depends on on the child very much. There's there's um, if if your child is a good singer uh, and and is very keen to do musicals, then they'll also need to do some movements. So they may be a fantastic singer, but don't ignore the fact that at some point in that show they'll almost certainly have to do some movement or some dance. So right. if you know that you're a great singer but you you're not a great mover, then you should definitely do some classes in that. It it's the more the more things that you're good at the more likely you are to to have a lasting career i mean that's that goes for children that goes for adults um right. if you're a fantastic dancer as a child and sometimes i've seen amazing dancers um as children who are very frightened of singing because they've never had to do it so do some singing lessons and that can be joining a choir or it can be doing proper singing lessons and we don't expect people to come to auditions ready you know with with lots of qualifications when they're only 
eight or nine, you know, that's, right. that would be unrealistic. But if they are seriously keen, then make sure they have a broad range of things that they do and make sure that they um, don't just concentrate on the things they're good at. It's always mm -hmm. tempting to just do your dance classes five nights a week because you're a brilliant dancer. But actually what you need to do is think, oh, well, I'm not a good singer, so I need to spend some time doing that. Because there's very few jobs, very few jobs in musical theatre where you don't have to do three things, sing, dance and act. Now, if you're going to do television or, and just acting, then that's fine. You don't have to do those dance classes. You don't have to do those singing lessons. But don't just go to your one class a week. Have a look around and see what else is around so that you you get a whole experience of training because the more training you do, the more you'll be prepared to come in and see people without worrying because yeah. you know that you'll be good at it. And I think that's that confidence you get from having done stuff and, and you know, is is tremendous, actually. That gets you through quite a long way through an audition process if you look like somebody who's going to be able to take on new challenges. And deliver when they get the yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. I love that what you said about sort of having to focus on the thing that's that's harder because for kids, a lot of the time, it's really tempting to want to feel fulfilled and satisfied by, I love dancing, I'm great at dancing, I can tap dance seven days a week. But if you're having a hard time hitting the notes, it's challenging and it's, it's disappointing and it's hard to go work on it. But working yeah. through that is a sign of maturity. And I think it's good for parents to help their kids into that stage of- Absolutely. And I think that's true. I mean, even when you get to be you know, a student as a, as a teen, a late, late teenager, as it were, that's really important as well. I mean, I, I know um, one particular college I was talking to who I asked a question about somebody who had said to me, oh, I want to do more Shakespeare in my course. Mm -hmm. And they said, but he's already good at that side. What he needs to do is concentrate on the singing because this is an all round musical theatre course. That's why we're making him do that more. And that's a very good thing to think of that. Oh, I mean, I, all my children, you know, did piano lessons at, uh, you know, as they were growing up and I would be shouting up the stairs to them to say, play it again, you know, try it again, because they would just want to play the bits they could play. Right. And actually what they needed to be doing is try the bits they couldn't play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally get that. Uh, so you did mention a little bit about about agents. So if a, a child actor does feel that they've gotten to a place where, you know, they've used Manny.com, they've used social media, they've reached out to you sort of by self-submission, and they're kind of getting to the end of that stage or, or where that's maybe not delivering for them the way they want to mm -hmm. deliver. Um, what do you think is the best steps necessary for them to go about finding the right agent for them? I think it's um, difficult when you live, uh, I mean, it's very easy to find lots of agents in London. Mm -hmm. um, it's harder when you when you live out of London because there are fewer children's agents out there. So I think you need to look at uh, the agents around. You can Google it as well as you know any of us can, uh, and see who's around uh, and see what they require as well. So a good agent, you know, will um, ask what you've done and might want to see some material, or they might want to. You know, at the moment we're doing everything remotely of course normally right. an agent will want to meet the child meet the parent quite often um there are classes in local areas where they have an agency attached so you can go to a saturday morning school for instance and they'll have an agency attached mm -hmm. and they will take children onto their agency who are showing promise in their classes and that's a great way of doing it um, mm -hmm. and there's lots of those around the country um you know after school training and saturday morning sunday training some dance schools you know have their own agency or have had children who have danced in their classes who have gone on to agents and they might be able to recommend things uh, agents for them um but but do do your research check check them out and check to make sure that they are they seem to be the sort of people you want to represent your child um mm -hmm. absolutely and you know, ask around, ask other parents, you know, if you know another child in the school who's done some professional work, ask, you know, who they're with. Um, but there's some very reputable children's agents out there, you know, who really know their stuff and who who really look after those children. And it's it's always good to have an agent on your side. It's not essential that you go into the industry with an agent, but it's great to have someone else on your side who's looking after things. And they can guide you through uh, the things like licensing as well, because they're used to doing it with their children. Absolutely. And so 
you said the famous sort of dreaded L word, um, <laughs> licensing. Let's let's talk about it. What uh, what can you sort of how can you help give suggestions for parents about how to uh, you know be prepared for this? Uh, what to know in advance? You know, say you get the call. It's about you know you're, you book the job. What what is the sort of process from there, and how does that work for them? Yeah, it can be a bit daunting if you've never had a child to go through licensing before. So basically, licensing is done by the child's education authority. That's who they get a license from. Um, in order to do that, of course, you have to jump through several hoops to get that license. Uh, and it's all done with the best interests of the child at heart. That's exactly what the license is for. It's making sure that the producers give you the right information and that, you know, the child will not suffer from their education being disrupted or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, being asked to work too many hours or, you know, whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. So although it's complicated, it's, and it, it's a lot of form filling and a lot of providing things. It's not impossible. So the, the best way to, to prepare yourself for it is that as soon as you get a show offered or a job offered, and it can be for an advert or anything like that, you're going to be asked to provide a passport sized photograph, which can be digital these days, uh, a copy of the child's birth certificate. You're going to have to fill in a medical form and you're going to have to get a letter from the school that says they agree that the child can do the work. Um, now, it depends. Sometimes if it's an advert, it might be a morning off school or it might be filmed on, you know, during the holidays and they don't need a morning off school. But if it's a show in the West End, they might need three weeks of school for the rehearsals and they might need every other week off while they're on tour uh, or, every, you know, every Wednesday off if they're doing for a midweek matinee. Right. Yeah. And the, the school are going to have to agree that. And the education authority will not give that license if the school don't agree. So I always think that if you're doing this seriously and you think your child's gone up for some auditions and you think that they might be making some headway, then have a word with the class teacher and have a word maybe with the head teacher and say, I'm thinking of doing, you know, letting my child do this. If so, they might need time off school and get them on your side. Now, I have never had a child go through a, a show in the West End or a show on tour where they've suffered from a lack of education because while they're on tour they get tutors to help them get through their work and when they're in the west end apart from during rehearsals they're not missing that much school but they will miss some and it's important to reassure that the class teacher and the head teacher that the child will keep up with their work and generally children who work in entertainment tend to be fairly motivated and realize that if they keep up with their work on one job the school will let them do the next job and that sure. you know that's really important i had a uh, one of my children did a lot of filming when he was young and he worked out very early on that if he went back to school ahead of where he should be they would not complain next time he asked for some time off so so make sure you have that conversation with the school um, and get them on your side you know it's it's really important because school teachers you know don't necessarily have any more experience of children in entertainment than the parents do so they can be a bit worried about it but you need to reassure them and and make sure they understand that you will take it seriously you know getting the education sort of you know keeping the yeah. education up as it were now all children Absolutely. here have done lockdown education with their parents so parents are used to it now but <laughs> um you know it, it and it's hard work but it's important to keep it up because you know, we don't want any child to suffer, any child's education to suffer while they're doing a show. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be wise for us at all. Um, right. So get all that ready. And uh, when, when the forms come in, make sure you read the forms properly, fill in the questions properly. Quite often we spend days sending things backwards and forwards to parents because they haven't answered the questions that we've asked them to. You know, we say, you must answer this question. They leave it blank. That doesn't work. You know, or they don't sign it in the right place or they haven't put the correct information in. So read the forms really carefully when they get to you. Uh, and next time the form is going to be almost, the, the form is always the same for every show, for every good job. Uh, the detail about the job will change, but the, your information will be the same. So make sure you read it all carefully and then it won't be such a drama when it's sent to you and you have to fill it in really quickly because the job's starting very soon. Yeah, so how quick can the turnaround be? What should parents expect? What's the quickest you've seen? Basically? Uh, the quickest that, I've that. seen is a few days, um, but that's for adverts usually or right. for a replacement. For instance, you know, we had um, a case on one show where a child had uh, chickenpox 
on a show in the West End and we had to replace them very, very quickly. So uh, we, as administrators, we called the local authority and said, we've got this problem. We've got a child with chickenpox. We'd like this child who was second choice to take over, um, but they have to start next week because that, you know, they've got the other child's got chickenpox. And they turned that round within about four days, I think. So that's fine. But normally it's three weeks from before it's, you you might get offered the job and asked to get everything back to you within a week and then it can take three weeks before the license is granted mm -hmm. so it just depends on the authority on, that's based on sort of municipality where you're located basically. absolutely yeah the law is that right. they 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 require 21 days um in order to process a license some authorities will do it quicker than that uh some will take 21 days for sure. So just to sort of clarify for parents who are listening, it seems like what I'm hearing from Debbie is plan ahead, talk to the educators in your child's school, make a plan so that you can get it all set, preparation, get the paperwork together, know what you need so that when the call comes that your child book the job, which is so exciting that you're ready to go and then get it in as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. And what we'll do is we'll put all this into a guide on Manny.com's page uh, for, for parents so that they can see sort of Debbie's suggestions for how to tackle the licensing process head on, just so that you guys have it there and you're not furiously only taking notes right now. <laughs> um, that's really that's really informative. And we really don't have the same process here in the US. So it's been interesting to hear sort of how that all works. Um, so sort of moving on, we were talking about that that moment of getting the job, but, but backing up to before that, um, you know, so I'm a child actor, whether I have an agent or I self-submit, whatever, I'm, I'm in the room, right? And maybe I'm in the room for my first time, the 10th time, the 50th time, but there's still sort of the same questions that always linger, which is, what do I wear? How do I not let my nerves take over? How do I sort of get ready for the moment before I'm going to be in front of Debbie O'Brien, you know, singing my song or, you know, telling a joke, doing a dance, whatever it might be? Generally, as far as what to wear, if you haven't been told specifically to wear an outfit, then wear something comfortable, something that's quite not smart, but, you know, make it look like the child's, you know, it, it's a job. It's a professional job. So make them look quite smart. Um, we used to on Thriller Live, we quite often had uh, people turn up dressed as mini Michael Jackson's, which was great, but it wasn't mm -hmm. necessary. But sometimes it's it's lovely to see the effort people put in. Um, the, the biggest mistake people make really are wearing things that they can't act in. So they did wear shoes. Children come in. There was a, a fashion a, a couple of years ago for them wearing shoes called sliders. Well, and sliders, you know, it's impossible to do a proper audition in sliders because basically they fall off all the time. Uh, and you can't you can't do any drama games or anything because you're worried about your, your, your fancy right. footwear uh, disappearing. Um, and, uh, you know, y you might be asked to sit on the floor. You might be asked to to do some drama games. So wear something. Uh, you know, wear trousers or um, girls, if, the, if you, you're going to wear a skirt, wear leggings underneath, um, you know, because you just don't know, just make yourself comfortable. And things that are a real no-no, particularly, you know, we noticed with girls, you know, don't, don't wear anything that shows your tummy or, you know, wear something that's, that's comfortable, it's good for drama, um, that's fine. We, we can see beyond what you're wearing to see whether you're good or not. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes for adverts or TV, you might be asked to wear a specific outfit, you know, so they'll say mm -hmm. you must wear this, you must wear that. So read the instructions carefully. There's a reason they've asked to do that. Um, if you suffer from nerves and everybody probably suffers from nerves a bit, but don't let them take over. Um, we're, it seems a sort of odd thing to say, but we're on your side. You know, when you come into the room, we want you to be good at this. We're not we're not some awful jury that sit there, <laughs> you know, judging you like that. We're trying to encourage you to be right, because obviously if you're if you come in and you're right for the job that, that we've done our job properly, then, you know, so we're definitely on your side. I always think that you should think about coming into the room, not worried about whether you'll get the job, but enjoying the job of having an audition coming in and having an audition is your chance to perform that day and if you like performing just go ahead and perform do what they've asked you to do if that's a song or a speech or you know a poem whatever it is just enjoy it and then go out and don't think about it anymore i used to say to my children 
that once they were out of an audition room as children, they should never think about that audition again. You know, they should never say to me every day, oh, did they ring? You know, did I get the job? Did I get the job? Just, it was just fun. Just enjoy it. And the more you just enjoy it and relax, the better it will be as an experience for you. And the more auditions you do, the more you'll get used to them and you'll get better and better at auditioning the more you do. So just enjoy it. Don't, don't put yourself through such a lot of stress. The biggest mistake people make is not preparing properly. So if you've been told you need to sing a verse of a song, make sure you know the verse of that song. Now, sometimes you'll come into the room and go completely blank and have forgotten it, but we're used to that. Everybody does that. Honestly, grown up actors do that but more than you can imagine. So we expect children to do that as well. Don't worry about it. Somebody on the team will probably know that song and will help you along. Um, if you've been asked to do a poem, just make sure you know your poem before you come in. Don't think on the way to the audition, oh, I didn't learn that. Because that makes your life more difficult and you don't want that. You just want to have a nice time when you come to the audition. Um, if you've been sent something to learn, make sure you learn it. Um, Everybody might make mistakes. That's not a problem. But but make yourself more comfortable by doing your preparation in advance. Absolutely. And I think that's the same if there are, you know, adult actors listening. That goes for adults, too. It's the oh, same, absolutely. Absolutely. same mentality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so thinking about, you know, kids who come in to see you for the first time uh, and maybe they don't hear back, you know, they didn't get a call back or whatever it might be. Um, I would imagine it's relative, with relative frequency that you bring in kids multiple times before they ever get a call back or you've ever booked them for a job. Is that fair to say? Or? Absolutely. I mean, we, we see some people for three or four shows before they might make it through. Um, and that's partly because they're getting used to auditioning. Um, mm -hmm. But also they might just not be right for it or they might be too tall for a role or they might not fit with the other people in, you know, maybe in, the, in something like The Sound of Music, you've got to have a certain height um, for right. each of the children because that's part of part of the show but that's part of the brief um, so just because you didn't get a call back once doesn't mean to say we won't see you for something else um, and sometimes on a long running show you might see people children one year for one role and the next year they might have grown a bit and they'll be right right for the next role up in 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 the age of the children in the show that happens a lot actually um, there's a, famously we remember a, a girl who um, came in one year uh, for Molly in Annie um, mm -hmm. and then the following year she came in for the next one up and still didn't get it but the third year she came in she was just right for the next role and she got it that year so so we were very pleased about that. Yeah and so it's, it's really it is a, a waiting game and doing the preparation and putting the work in and not you know, don't hang on to Molly because in three years you'll have something even better. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you never know what's around the corner. We, we, you know, we might see you for, for one show and then the, the next week we're auditioning for something else and we'll bring you in for that. You know, we saw lots of the same children for uh, The Bodyguard in the West End, uh, also for Thriller Live and for other shows like that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, they we, we got there was a boy once who came into an audition for Caroline or Change, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me and he said, I've seen you before. And I said, <laughs> yeah, you've been in for four of our shows now. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, you saw me before. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's, it, that's right. You know, we keep lists of, of, of the children who, who were in last week and we think, oh, well, they weren't right for this. So let's see them for something else. You know, we, we're very, um, uh, all casting directors will do that, you know. For sure. Um, I'm going to ask you a few more questions, but just for folks who are, are watching, listening on Facebook, um, if you have questions for Debbie, feel free to put them in the comments. We're going to get to a question and answer session in a few minutes, and I will read through some specific questions. So if you do have questions, you can send them our way. Um, in the meantime, I'd love next to talk a little bit about how things have been for you during the pandemic, Debbie, and how you what you've seen change in your work and uh, what sort of the, the requirements, the necessities of the industry, how those things have changed for you at this time. Um, well, here we are on Zoom. Here we are. <laughs> who, knew, who knew we should have had shares in Zoom? <laughs> uh, because absolutely everything we've done recently has been remote. Uh, mm -hmm. you, there have been some auditions uh, in London, but barely any at all. Um, I think what has been really interesting is over the past 
six months, I guess, is how much better people have got at self-taping. Mm -hmm. um, because nearly all our first round auditions now are on self-tape and that goes for adults as well as children. Mm -hmm. And um, the more they've been asked to do it, the more they've got themselves into a, a place where that's easier to do. And mm -hmm. uh, I think to some extent that will go forward. I think, I think that for, for the foreseeable future, even when things unlock, I think a lot of first round auditions will be on self-tape now. At the moment, we're doing recalls on Zoom, um, you know, and then that that has its own challenges because, you know, if you're trying to have a pianist on one bit of a call and the singer in another room, you know, it depends on everyone's really broadband hard. working, which doesn't, you know, you know we're, we're all just getting used to it and finding different ways of doing it, to be honest. But um, the, the self-taping thing is really important now. So um, you spend some time, I, I think I would advise children and adults to spend some time getting used to doing that filming in landscape not in portraits right. um, <laughs> making sure your the background behind you is is um, fairly plain making sure that um, you know you you get used to that th th there are ways of editing tapes so that you don't you know you don't have to rely on um, you know, what comes with your phone there, there are apps that do it very well because what, you know, you don't want to be sending, the, you know, all the extraneous things, you know, that yeah. well, it's quite nice if a cat walks along your sofa, we don't, <laughs> we don't mind anything like that at all. But, um, you know, just get used to doing it, practice it a few times before you have to do it for an audition, I would say, then it doesn't, it's not so stressful if you suddenly get told to do a self-tape by tomorrow morning. And that happens quite a lot. And I know people think that it's unreasonable to ask people to do that, but sometimes maybe you offered six people self tapes and only one of them could do it. So suddenly the night before you can, you can offer that to five other people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you will always offer it, even though they say, well, you know, it's, it's difficult because I haven't got time because I've got another job. Everybody has other jobs, you know, yeah. um, but you know, it gives you the best chance to do it. So it, it, as it, I know that everybody has to have extraordinary um, setups where, you know, iPhones are balanced on three books and a music <laughs> stand. You know, I, I do understand it's it's difficult and finding a quiet place in a room in a house that's got three other children in it or something is hard, um, but do the best you can, you know. Nobody expects it to be a perfect film, but they expect to be able to see you and hear you um, doing you know what you do best which is the best work yeah and and i think it's also important just to sort of piggyback on that is there is always you know someone who is going to put in the work and do it so if you get offered that self date and the turnaround is too quick there are so many actors out there who are going to make that work that's, child that's or not absolutely correct you yeah know, we have 2.9 million members on mandy and guarantee there are there's six people who are going to turn around those self tapes you know <laughs> yeah. no i just like to, to do a special shout out to everybody who has to be the other voice you know when people are sent pages of dialogue because yeah. uh, i've had to do that and it's it's extremely stressful as not an actor to be doing that and finding the stressful. so a special thank you to everybody who's <laughs> other voice in those self tapes that are coming yeah for sure <laughs> I, we have I feel your pain <laughs> we have a uh, we have a great partner actually at Mandy Moodcaster uh, that's an app where you can sort of link up with another actor who will be your second reader so that your brother or your wife or your cat doesn't have to read for you kind of. <laughs> that's such a good idea. It's it's yeah. such a good idea. Uh, I mean, I've had some very funny self tapes where people have got a friend of theirs on Zoom to do it uh, as well, and some of those have been absolutely hilarious, deliberately hilarious. Um, but yeah. but I know how long that's taken them to set up. The, you know, well, you know, I've actually got to work at the supermarket that week. Uh, but could you do ten o'clock on a Tuesday <laughs> night, and you know, and you know, all of that? So so the the idea that there's an app that you can link up with is such a brilliant idea, <laughs> and they would have saved the me off. having to do, you know, some difficult difficult reading in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so just a few other questions sort of that I think might be interesting for folks. Uh, you've obviously worked on a lot, a lot of high profile projects. Do you have a favorite? Do you have like your baby that you loved casting and it was sort of the one or? Uh, it's a really tricky question, actually, because it, it sort of goes in phases. But um, we Priscilla, Queen of the Desert is was a great show for us to work on. And we had such a great time casting that and uh the the children in that were great 
you know, we, we cast the adults as well as the children. The children were fantastic. Right. But we also did the children in Kinky Boots in the West End, and that was such a fantastic show as well. Um, before, I mean, Annie is very close to my heart because it was the first show I did children's any children's casting on. Uh, you know, there was another casting director, but I did the administration and, and helped with the mm -hmm. auditions. So whenever Annie comes back and that, you know, we get to do that again, I, I, it's it's one I'm, I'm very fond of it, really. Very yeah, fond. For sure. <laughs> And is there any show that you sort of have had your eye on and you have not had the chance to cast, but you know it's it's there and you want to get to it at some point? <laughs> oh, every show that comes up, we think that, you know. Why, why would that be? We're just like actors in that respect. You know, I, I could I could have done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we always think that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. And have you guys seen anything, you know, sort of talking about COVID and how things are, are changing right now, have you have things sort of been ramping up over the past couple of weeks, months in terms of theater auditions, tours, things like that? Or are there sort of ideas about that circulating or? Um, so things were starting to ramp up and then we got this other lockdown and everybody really went right. backwards a bit. We've been talking quite a lot about a few projects for next year. So things that will go into rehearsal at the end of January uh, mm -hmm. onwards, as it were. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, I think, particularly with the news that we might get a vaccine. I think that's very good news. Um, mm -hmm. And the difficulties, we had a big TV show that we were doing with children in it, which had to get postponed um, twice already. Uh, and I'm hoping that that will certainly come back next year because uh, it's such a great opportunity for the children in it and for the adults actually. But it's, um, the complications of, of having children on a set you know with covid regulations just make it more complicated than normal so we're right. hoping that by then things will there'll be protocols in place that make it easier to do that and they'll be able to go ahead and confirm it but it's a very exciting project so we're we're really hoping for the children particularly who were cast and then couldn't do the show that it comes back soon right <laughs> so they yeah, don't absolutely. grow too far <laughs> all those kids please stop growing yeah stop growing. <laughs> um so i'm gonna ask you a few questions from uh folks who are watching on the okay. on the facebook stream uh, some of them are super specific but uh and some of them might be more general but uh uh gay squires has asked uh my daughter had a singing audition this weekend and we were asked for money to get to the next stage we refused did we do the right thing Absolutely, you did the right thing. You should never be yeah. charged to do auditions at all. I, I can't imagine who would dare to do that. Yeah, I, I knew you were going to say that, but I think it's really important for everyone yeah. to hear, especially parents of kids who are starting out. You shouldn't be paying your agent out up front. You shouldn't be paying a casting director. Those people are there to work Absolutely. with you and for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Hannah Brooks asks, at what age do self-tapes really come into play? Uh, he, I'm assuming uh, son or child that she cares for, is almost two and has not been asked to self-tape yet. When should we start practicing? It's very difficult to practice with a, with a child who, who, you know, would rather do anything than look at um, a screen, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've got a granddaughter who's four and, you know, if we FaceTime to speak to her, she she's you know she says hello and then she would much rather be off playing lego you know <laughs> somewhere mm -hmm. so i i think it would be unusual to ask a child that young but you know you can get them used to talking to their grandparents on on the screen and you know even if it doesn't come in useful for a self tape at least they'll be able to say hello to their grandparents sure. <laughs> you know? um I, I think quite often when they're that young you know you have a you might have them sitting on a, a parent's or carer's lap uh, and most of the acting actually being done by the adults, but right. it's uh, it, it, they might do it in order to see whether the child has any hope of sitting still while they're trying to film. Yeah, for sure. You know? um, uh, and, and some children can, some children you know really don't want to do it, so I wouldn't force them. Yeah, and I think it's great, like you said, just to get it at that age. Maybe it's just the idea of getting comfortable, just being having a camera on you, and that doesn't have yeah. to be performing. It's just like you said, talking to grandma. Yeah. Um, Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sinead Gibson said, uh, if a 13 year old girl was asked to sing an a cappella modern musical number for an audition, what would you suggest? I'm really putting you on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what the show is, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of different shows that, that require a different style of singing. So it's difficult to be specific, but I would nearly always 
advise that the child sings something appropriate for a child rather than an, a pop song that is written for an adult. Sure, that's I really think, good advice. I think sometimes, I, you know, I've had children come into auditions who, who have sung songs that have shocked me because they <laughs> don't realise what some of the lyrics mean. And mm -hmm. presumably the parents haven't listened to it, haven't read the lyrics and haven't realised what they're singing. And it just makes you like, Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, it's uncomfortable, so, so yeah. Find a, find a song that's that's written for a child and do that. Um, or, you know, for, your t for a, a young teenager, it doesn't have to be a nursery rhyme or anything. Um, but there are plenty of musicals, as we know, um, and musical films that have children's songs in them. So I would choose one of those. Absolutely. Um, great advice. Uh, Claire Noon has asked about a question about schools in general. It seems like she has a daughter who is almost 10 years old and she's worried that she needs to be looking for stage schools, things like that. Um, is stage school, stagecoach and Lambda enough uh, or should she wait until she's older so she can do additional courses at college, et cetera, and she's located in the Midlands? I think uh, schools, you know, stagecoach, top hat, those sort of schools are great to do. I mean, you know, apart from anything else, they're good fun. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of children do them who don't want to go into the business, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it's great. You know, there's no pressure on you to, to do the business if you don't want to. Um, and they lead on well to other, you know, more professional courses, as it were. So, you know, sure. if you've done stagecoach, you know, since you were young and then apply to, um, a stage school, a full-time stage school or something, then you, you know, you'll have a good grounding in things, but it's not essential to go to a full-time school, certainly uh, not, as I say, it doesn't matter to us whether a child has gone to a full-time school or has an agent or doesn't um, mm -hmm. for certain shows, but uh, you have to be prepared if you do apply to those schools to realize, how, you know, it's quite hard to get in. And when you get in, the chances are you'll be doing half the week schoolwork and half the week performance work. And you have to be prepared to put in those hours. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know. It's quite a commitment. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite a commitment. And it's, you know, if you live in the Midlands and, um, you know, the, the stage schools are in London, you know, do you want to be living away from home when you're only 10? I, you know, right. it's, it's different for a different families and, you know, different situations. Yeah, it seems like it, it's a personal choice based on the, yeah, the but, performer. Yeah, but if you want to work as an adult, you don't have to have worked as a child. That's so, really important. So don't rush yeah. it. You know, don't don't feel you have to give up everything as a child just because you want to be an actor when you grow up. Um, For sure. You know, but you, you know, see, see what suits you. See what your family can cope with, really. Because it's a big commitment from the family as well. And That's really good. That's really important to notice that it's not, there's no way you can just sort of send a child off into this career as a child. It's really a family commitment. Absolutely. It's a real family commitment. And, and some, some families can do that and some can't, you know, because their parents work or, you know, they have, there are other children or there are other reasons. So, um, you know, every, every situation is different really. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if the child is desperate to do it and tries, then fine. But don't think that's the end of the world if they don't end up going to one of the stage schools. You know, it's really not the end of the world. For sure. That's, that's really great advice. Um, Danielle Beckner has asked uh, if there's anything specific about starting off as a teen. So the idea of, you know, not really having done a lot of acting as a child, but then deciding as a teen that it's something you want to pursue professionally. Is there a different sort of path for that age range or does it kind of follow the same advice that you've given previously? It's pretty much the same advice. Uh, the only trouble about starting off as a teen is that the, there are fewer roles in performing as teenagers um you know once they get to 14 15 it, there's just fewer roles but mm -hmm. you know th there are a lot of children who act on television and do adverts and things um at, at that age but it may be that you do lots of classes as a teen and don't really come into your own as it were until you've graduated at 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. um you know it's, a, it's an odd thing usually when they cast children in shows or in television or in film they need them to be children <laughs> and mm -hmm. so there's this difficult age particularly for boys um you know once their voices break it's it's a good few years before they're likely to do a musical again um, right. and some of them never go back to singing some of them have had enough by then you know they did it all as a child and 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 don't uh, don't don't take it any further but um there it, it's it's difficult for teens but it's a great time to be training because not only does it keep you fit but it's great for your social skills and 
um it all of the more things you do the more rounded you are as a person the easier it is to perform so right. i would keep going to the classes and uh you know keep keep working at things um because you'll find your path you will find right. your path you and know. if it's something you want to do, like you're saying, you know, you, you keep training at, at 15, 16, you'll have a leg up when you get to, you know, conservatory or university. You'll, Absolutely. you'll know more. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, anything that keeps your mind active and your body active, you know, is, is all a bonus. It absolutely is. Awesome. Um, Kelly Bench is asking uh, if a child's in an audition and things have gone off the rails a little bit, is it okay to ask to start again? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even even an adult, we would say if if it goes completely wrong, just say oh, I'm really sorry. Um, you know, I messed that up. Can I can I start again? Nobody mm -hmm. would mind that at all. Um, but don't get get into a flap about it. Mm -hmm. What they want to see in an audition is when things go wrong that you can cope with it. So things go wrong. Don't don't think that's the end of the world. But just say I made a mistake. I forgot my words. You know, I meant to do something. Can I start again? and just show that you can collect your thoughts and, and carry on. And that, that goes for adults as well as children. You know, right. What they don't want to do is to find that if you were on stage and you forgot your words, that you would fall apart. Right, and it's, I think it's so important for actors to keep in mind that this isn't just to see your talent, this is to see what, who you'd be in the yeah. rehearsal room, in Absolutely. performance, what, what your character is like you know, as a human. <laughs> yeah, because that makes a good actor, of course. You know? Exactly. We, we need some depth there. <laughs> Uh, Hiba Rumiyasa is asking, is there anything we can do to make our self-tapes stand out among others? <laughs> hmm. Stand out. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they stand out the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I did have someone recently send in a self-tape where they used a friend to do their, uh, the other voice in the self-tape. And the other friend was in bed. And I thought that was odd. So that tape <laughs> certainly stood out, but not necessarily the way they wanted it to. Um, I think uh, being able to say your name clearly at the beginning and look like you're enjoying making the self tape goes a long way. So you look confident, you look like you're enjoying doing it rather than you're being forced to do it, you know, with, with your parents pointing a camera at you sort of thing. Um, and make sure that whatever you've been asked to do, you actually do. So if they said you need to do a poem that is 10 lines long, do a poem that's 10 lines long. Don't do 1500 lines right that's you know. not the way to stand out it's not the way to stand out but you know make sure that as I, you know that you look bright you look interested and you um don't look like you'd rather be doing something else sure <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, should go for it in life actually <laughs> exactly right that's how we should always live uh, one last question from our, our viewers uh lucy prescott is asking uh lucy says i'm 15 with type 1 diabetes and a condition that makes me small would this impair my hopes of getting a job it depends on the job i mean i can't imagine it would impair impair it you know uh, nobody would ask about health conditions um right. audition stage but um it, it's a it's a general point for everybody that only go out for jobs that you're right for so you know if, if you're not right for something read the description if you think you're right for it go for it absolutely right. go for it if if um it says you know we need a boy who is five foot six and you're a girl who's four foot eleven then don't go for that job Right. Don't put yourself through something that you're not going to get. But if you think you're right for it, absolutely go for it. Yeah. You, know, you never know. It... Apart from that, you never know. And that happens a lot with new shows is you might think you're looking for something and then somebody will come into the room and just offer a different thing. Yeah, know, energy, energy or say, vibe or something. Actually, yeah. I, actually, I thought I needed that, but that person was brilliant. I think we could go with that that happens more than you can imagine. So and that's part of the, ma that's the magic. That's what makes it fun and exciting. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so for someone like Kelly, or Lucy, sorry, Lucy, who is uh, uh, 15 and on the smaller end, would that preclude, how much does age play in? You know, if you're looking for a character who's 12, but someone like Lucy might be 15 and appear 12, does that matter to you? Or how does that sort it of play depends out? Because if they, if we say that we're looking for a 12 year old who has to be childlike, and you're you're 15, and even though you're small, you're more you feel more teenagery or grown up. Your, ener your energy or your work. how you carry yourself. Yeah. yeah. So be honest with yourself. Do I 
do my friends always complain that you know I'm I'm too much of a child? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, do you know what I mean? You you have yeah. to just be honest with yourself. And though you yeah. might desperately want to do a job, there's no point in in agonizing, making yourself agonize over something that you're not right for. Um, and the age thing, I mean, sometimes it's difficult to tell whether somebody's 10 or 12. Sometimes it's difficult yeah. to tell whether they're 11 or 13. Um, but most 15 year olds might feel too grown up for a role that has to be young and childlike. Uh, and that's not to do with their height or anything like that. So right. just be honest with yourself. Um, do I really, you know, suit that role? And if so, then it, it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, I mean, the only thing that does matter is if particularly you're looking for a child if the, with the licensing rules, sometimes you need a child who's over nine. And that's... Yes, we, we did have a question about that. And I think you kind of covered that, that that's not really within your control, that sort of it's thing. It's not within our control. And it's because the uh, working hours and regulations are slightly different for children between the ages of five and nine and over nine. Um, so if we say we have to have a child over nine, there's a reason for that. Yeah. And similarly, you know, if you're looking for a younger child, um, if you, we say they must be over five, it's because of the licensing rules, you know, sure. nothing else. And yeah. so, so we that happens a lot that we get asked, oh, you know, I see you're looking for a six year old, but my child's only four. Will they be right? And that's, you know, it, it doesn't work because of the rules right. or, you know, the thing that we get asked more than anything is you say a child has to live within an hour of London, you know, does Birmingham count? Birmingham doesn't count because they could not get back to Birmingham after the show in right. an hour, door to door. And it's to do with that. You know, right. there's a reason we've asked for that. Uh, you know, it, it is really hard. But parents quite often tell me that they live within an hour of London and they live further north than I do. And I'm an hour and a half from London. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So that, that sort of honesty is important. And it seems like that's the case for parents or, you know, whether it be age or health condition or disability, or any of those things, nothing precludes you from a role as long as you're actually following the requirements of the role. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing yeah. precludes you from it at all. Uh, yeah. But but do, do do read it carefully, read the breakdown carefully and, um, you know, make sure uh, we have had it before where a, a child has come to an audition knowing that we they had to live within a certain range and then when they've come back to their recall, we've discovered actually they live in Devon or something, which is, you know, four hours away or, or whatever. And they just got turned away. And I don't want to put children through that. I don't want to put three yeah. adults through that. Yeah. Uh, so be very careful that the, that the requirements of the role uh, on the breakdown, uh, you know, what you read them carefully and don't, don't try and fudge it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so before we finish up, I just want to ask you two last questions. Uh, one question that I like to ask is sort of, what is one of your all-time favorite child actor performances? Something that sticks in your mind as, I'll never forget this actor in this role, be it on stage or film or TV or whatever it might be. Hmm. There's been some brilliant children. There have been some really brilliant children. Um, I think, I think you should, if you look at um, the remake of The Railway Children, Jemima Roper playing Bobby was fantastic in that. She really was. Um, I think the obvious ones that, you know, the, the, the girl in Stranger Things and um, mm -hmm. she was tremendous. And the girl who plays the teenager in um, the Tim Minchin series called Upright. Okay. Quite extraordinary performances for young people. They really awesome. are. But then you know, when you look back on things like E.T. and Home Alone, I mean, they're yeah. fantastic performances. Yeah. They really are. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things. And and it, some of the children we've had in shows in the West End, um, I, you know, I'm hats off to them. I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't stand up on stage, you know, but <laughs> they, they just go on and uh, just seem to enjoy it and and light up the place when they go on. I mean, some of the children in Annie have been amazing. And yeah. in Kinky Boots, oh my goodness, we've had some brilliant children in Kinky Boots. So, you know, there's all yeah. sorts of things. And every, but every, I'm in awe of anyone who can do it, but mostly when children do it and just take it with a pinch of salt, you think that's incredible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
it's like, I want to be a kid again. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> uh, well, those are great performances and kids who are at home, uh, you know, check those out while you're in lockdown. That's, that's a great time to do sort of learn by watching and researching and, you know, see some of these great performances over the years. Um, my last question is what is the weirdest, wildest, wackiest thing that's ever happened to you in a casting session? <laughs> Anything that just stands out as, oh my goodness. For children or for adults? You could share either. Uh, we, we did have someone who refused, we were doing um, open auditions for the Rocky Horror Show and somebody came on on stage and started singing. She brought, she wouldn't sing with our pianist, but so she brought her own um, uh, CD machine and sang with that and she wouldn't stop when we tried to stop her and carried on singing <laughs> and she wouldn't leave the stage I mean she would not leave the stage at the end of the audition she it was oh quite extraordinary <laughs> and then eventually we, the stage manager and the casting assistant managed to get her off stage and then about 20 minutes later she appeared behind us in the auditorium with bags of McDonald's uh, which made us jump terribly um, and she'd somehow managed to get through front of house and brought us McDonald's and that was pretty weird. <laughs> wow yeah that's a pretty good one that's that's intense. Um, and there was a little girl who came and saw us for Annie who um, they were all sitting around in a circle and singing one by one and some of them had music out on their uh, lap and she was sitting cross-legged on the floor and we noticed that she had her music in a ring binder and she caught her hand in the ring binder in hearing someone else's song and she, we saw it and she started, we could see, but she was determined to hold on. And then as soon as the child finished, I had to run and unclip her um, ring binder from her hand. And we will always know her as ring binder girl. <laughs> and we, we've had everything. I mean, we've had people faint during auditions. We've had, you know, we've had, we've seen everything really. Yeah, it's you not could, a boring job. <laughs> no two days are ever the same. And people say oh will you remember that i really messed up an audition i have to say no we really won't remember if you messed up an audition because so many weird things happen that yeah. you know we couldn't we couldn't um remember every <laughs> everything but yeah we literally we've had people cry we've had people fall over we've you know all sorts of things so, so any, funny. anything can happen in an audition i think you're i think the mcdonald's story is one of the best i've heard that's really we were too frightened terrifying. to eat it <laughs> yeah it's oh yeah i would you know what she put in <laughs> <laughs> And That's the sad amazing. thing is that we probably could have done with a McDonald's at that point in the day. <laughs> Keep your spirits up, yeah. Uh, one last uh, thing that did happen in yeah. the same audition, now I think of it, was uh, we'd been there all day auditioning and a man came on stage right at the end. Uh, and he's, we said, okay, what are you going to sing? And he said, oh, I don't have a song. We said, well, why are you here? And he said, well, to be honest, I saw a cue and I joined it. <laughs> so he literally had queued all afternoon and then came on stage. <laughs> No idea what to do. No, oh I don't. No. I guess <laughs> Rocky Horror probably brings out. Yeah. <laughs> um, Debbie, thank you so much. This has been so insightful and it's really, truly a joy to chat with you. Um, I'm, this is the one of the benefits of COVID pandemic lockdown time is that I get to talk to someone across the pond. And, and it's have fantastic. A chat. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for folks who are listening, uh, you can, like I said, everything we put into a guide on Mandy.com where you can sort of retrace uh, Debbie's suggestions and steps there. And this will still be on our Facebook page uh, for an extended period of time so you can share and watch. Um, you can find Debbie's castings on Mandy.com along with tons of other jobs for kids and actors. And uh, we hope that everyone is taking care, staying safe and uh, be well during this time. We will, we will get through this all together. Thank you so much, Debbie, for your time. I really appreciate it. Great pleasure. I hope it was useful. Talk to you soon. Yeah, it was care. great. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.